Okay guys, so because this is our first video, we're going to keep this one quite short. And just to remind you that you need to have ready for our next lesson your Cornell notes on this topic and a question that you would like to have answered in the lesson. Okay, so today's topic is distinguishing an aldehyde from a ketone. And I just want us to think before we start about the three words that we've had in our topics so far, detect, identify, and distinguish. So first of all, we've detected a carbonyl compound. Is it a carbonyl compound or not? Then we looked at a test that would identify the carbonyl compound. So giving you its exact name or identity, that carbonyl compound is ethanol, that carbonyl compound is pentan 2 ohm and then finally today we're going to have a look at something that distinguishes. Now when you have distinguish um, it often the next word is between and we're going to distinguish between these two things an aldehyde or a ketone. So we need a reaction in which these two different types of compounds will produce a different result. Okay and one of the ways in which they react differently is their what happens to them in terms of oxidation. So we know that an aldehyde will oxidize but a ketone won't oxidize um, and so we're going to use oxidation reactions to distinguish between aldehydes and ketones. So let's just have a look at that reaction. Here we have an aldehyde. You can tell it's an aldehyde because it's got this hydrogen next to the carbonyl group and we're going to use an oxidizing agent, so there's our symbol for an oxidizing agent, to turn, to add the, an extra oxygen into that aldehyde to make our carboxylic acid. Okay. Now here we have a ketone, we can tell it's a ketone because we've got that carbon R group inside the carbon chain, so there's a carbon here and a carbon here and we could add an oxidizing agent to the ketone and nothing would happen. The ketone would not oxidize. Okay, so let's have a look then at the oxidizing agents that we could use. Let's turn my notes over um, to do this process. So the oxidizing agent causes the oxidation of the aldehyde and in that process it gets reduced. We've actually looked at one of those examples already. We've looked at the dichromate ion and you get that by using acidified potassium dichromate and that is orange and then when reacted with an aldehyde we get the green colour which is the colour of the chromium 3 plus ion. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just um, bring in some of the work that you've done on oxidation numbers to prove that um, this is actually a reduction that's happening to our oxidising agent. So if you're pretty confident with oxidation numbers you might want to fast forward this bit of the video. If oxidation numbers send a shiver down your spine, you might want to pause the video now and just get out your AS textbook and have a look at the rules for working out oxidation numbers and then come back to the video. Okay, so this is a simple iron. It's just got one chromium um, atom in the iron. And so for a simple iron, you just take the charge of that iron and that tells you that element's oxidation number. Okay, over here this is a complex ion. This group of two chromiums and seven oxygens together, stuck together, has an overall charge of minus two. And the oxidation number, we always, oxygen's a bit of a benchmark, it's nearly always minus two. We put that in there and we use that along with the overall charge to work out that chromium is plus six. Okay, now if you could work that out just by looking at that, you can fast forward the next bit of the video. If you want to um, 
have a look at a few different methods for working that out, then you can uh, watch this bit now. Okay, so if we start from zero on our oxidation number, number line, and we're just going to put a little star by the minus two, because that is the charge of our complex iron. Now the sum of, adding up all the different oxidation numbers in this complex iron, should come to the answer minus two, the charge of the iron. So we've got seven oxygens, all with an oxidation number of minus two. So I'm just gonna start from zero and make seven jumps of minus two backwards. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, takes us down to minus 16. Now with our two chromiums, um, we've got to get back up to that overall charge of minus two. So we know that the oxidation state of chromium must be positive to get us that way back up the number line. If it had an oxidation number of plus two, that would only get us back to minus 10. If it was plus four, one, two, three, then that would take us eight back. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, take us back to minus six. Okay, and that wouldn't be far enough. So to get back in two jumps to minus two, we would have to go from here, two, three, four, five, six, to here. I don't want to mess this one up. And then another jump of plus six would take us back to minus two. Okay, now I wouldn't normally think of that oxidation number line when I'm doing it. What I would normally do is say that there are seven oxygens, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all with an oxidation number of minus two. I want those two to be left over. So my two chromiums, I've got to cancel out all of these plus two. So I'll just make a line halfway along and write each one of those would need to be plus six. That plus six cancels that minus six. That plus six cancels that minus six and we've got the overall oxidation number of minus two. We've got the overall charge of minus two left over. Okay, so the chromium, what we write underneath is always the oxidation number of just one of those chromiums, not the total for chromium. So the oxidation number of each chromium is plus six, and that has gone down to plus three, and that is our proof that that is the reduction half of the reaction. Okay, so that's looking at the oxidizing agent, acidified potassium dichromate, and the aldehyde that does get oxidized turns the acidified potassium dichromate from orange to green as the oxidizing agent is reduced, and the ketone that doesn't oxidize, with the ketone that doesn't oxidize, the acidified potassium dichromate would stay orange. Now that's a bit of an effort um, with all the quick fit apparatus, um, but there is another option, and that is to use a different oxidizing agent. Okay, so um, the German chemist, Bernard Tolens, uh, for, was the first person to use this complex iron, which is made with silver and two ammonia molecules joined together. And what he noticed is that when that reagent was reacted with an aldehyde, you would get a gray solid, or if you were really lucky, that gray solid would actually be a shiny solid. And that's because when this complex iron reduces, you produce silver. So we're gonna do the same thing and have a look at some oxidation numbers to show that our second oxidizing agent is also reducing as it oxidizes the aldehyde. So this molecule here is neutral overall. So the total of its oxidation numbers is zero and there are two of those. And the only other thing in here is the silver and overall we have a charge of plus one. So that tells us that the oxidation number of silver must be plus one in this complex iron. And the oxidation number of 
any element is zero. So the oxidation number has gone down from plus one to zero. So our oxidizing agent has been reduced. Now this is called the silver mirror test and the lucky few of you for who it works will produce a nice silver mirror um, coating the inside of the test tube um, that your aldehyde is in. The rest of us will just get a bit of grey solid but that's still a positive result. That still shows that um, the element silver has been produced. So the aldehyde will produce some silver and the ketone won't produce the silver so again, that's a way of distinguishing between an aldehyde and a ketone. And that is what we need to know for the specification about distinguishing between an aldehyde and a ketone. If you want to take it a little bit further and think a little bit past the specification, we can have a look at the words that we've been using. So, so far I've said it will or it won't oxidize. The aldehyde will, the ketone won't. But a more accurate way of saying that is saying that will the is the oxidizing agent or isn't the oxidizing agent strong enough to cause the oxidation? So the ones we've looked at were strong enough to oxidize an aldehyde, but not strong enough to oxidize a ketone. So that implies that there are stronger oxidizing agents that would actually oxidize a ketone. That's quite a destructive reaction and actually involves the breaking of some of the carbon-carbon bonds so that's a bit of a different kettle of fish. Okay so that's the end of our first video and just to remind you Cornell notes and a question that you would like to ask.